<laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. News your six coming. We got some serious chaos going here. We got people coming. We got people leaving. We got all sorts of madness. So what I'm doing right now is figuring out if I can. I have my phone tied. Nope, it ain't gonna work. Oh, maybe it will. See if I can run both these at the same time, loop together, with phone and my computer. So probably not, but we're gonna try it anyways. Let me know if it's working, and then we'll uh, we'll get started here. We got Thomas Rowland, Andy Nelson, Jerry Parker. What's going on? If you're out there and you haven't commented yet, because we got quite a few people in here, go ahead and uh, type something in there so I can say hi as well. Hey, don't you guys got anything better to do? <laughs> Did you go said I'm gonna turn the camera over and make you all on YouTube here in a second. All right, we got Brian T. So far, it says it's working. We got Abigail's out there. Doug B. Ranger 10 millimeter. What's going on? We had a good day today. We had a lot of fun. Ray's up to some shenanigans. I can already tell. He's going to bring the camera forward, I think. I don't know what the hell he's doing. I ain't going to do anything. Ronald Wilson, 45 Auto. How did you get from Ray's studio to yours so fast? <laughs> Man, that was amazing. I drove really, really quick. Let's see. Dylan Peters is out there. Steve Headley. Um, had a lot of fun today. First time I shot a 22 long rifle PRS match, and it was pretty good. It started off really well. I was I was doing really really well, and I was thinking, <laughs> this poor guy over here. Um, and uh, as it progressed through the stages, I started I started falling behind, missing some shots, and unfortunately, I got middle of the pack, got third in. Uh, my division, which was uh, production, so not bad. There was only seven shooters. So, like I said, middle of the pack, but you got to start somewhere, right? So, not bad. We've got an Alaska one. Andy's out there, 45 auto. Mike D, Jer Bear, Dylan Peters. That make sure I didn't miss anybody. So, this is the latest shooting bag we're going to use. That's right. Gives us a shelf. Hope you guys did awesome today. Thanks, uh, Commando97. Let's see. I hear it, Mike. D, Mike D, let's see here, let's see. Does anyone else hear that hissing static sound, or is it just me? It could just be all the chaos going on. If I was to turn the camera right now, there's a lot of madness happening in here. So, I did say on uh, race chat I was going to go live in about a half hour, which is a half hour. So, I didn't want to, uh... hey, plus five, plus fives out there. You can be proud of Rick. I did use this on uh, the cage stage, and I actually cleaned the stage with it. So, did use did use the awesome tripod, and uh, it worked out really well. So, it was it was basically if you guys are familiar, it's like a 300 gallon water container. And it's got the aluminum cage around it that was tilted on its side, and you had to uh, engage targets from the top of the cage, and then you had to kind of get inside the cage a little bit and shoot as well from there. So, plus five. This worked really well for that because we're a normal bipod, you know, it, it has a lot of holes. Um, this would have just basically went in between all the holes, so it worked out well. So nicely done, nicely done. See, so Garage Guy 879's out there. How's it going? It's going great. We did well. Uh, Matt P won quite a bit of stuff. Ray got third place. And uh, we took home some pretty good prizes. So they had a great prize table. It was a lot of fun. It was held in uh, Old Fort, North Carolina. And uh, Chris, what's Chris's last name, Ray? Simmons. Uh, Chris Simmons was the match director, and he did an awesome job. So they, he did a lot of you know a lot of hard work getting that set up, and uh, we do appreciate that and all this hard work and uh, getting some sponsor stuff out there for giveaways. So that was pretty pretty dang neat. Glad you all had a good time. I did. Uh, Andrew was a lot of fun. And there was a couple, let's see, there was 11 stages, and about the ninth stage, yeah, the ninth stage that we were shooting, I actually had to use the RPR bolt from uh, John Criderman's rifle because mine was ex having trouble extracting. We did know that going into it with shooting the uh, Ely 10X. It's got a very heavy wax on it, and after a while, it starts to build up a little bit. And I was having issues trying to pull a, pull the rounds out. So, swap those bolts out. It worked really well. 
some of the things I learned is uh, it seemed a lot easier today, but I have to have to basically say being able to do all that practicing that we've been doing with the 22, you know, the Ruger RPR and a few other rifles now that we've been shooting. A lot of that you can, I felt a lot more comfortable going into the stages and, uh, you know, knowing like different positions and how to leave my knee up and be able to utilize it with the bag to stabilize my shots. So it was kind of cool. So practice does pay off. I got a long way to go, a lot to learn, but I definitely had a good time. So Rick did your homework, wood mount stand thing. We actually couldn't use that. Um, the only thing you could use was the udder bag. And I don't know where that is. It's over here. So the only thing off the tank trap you could use was was this thing. And this is by Bison Tactical. Very nice bag. About 125 bucks. Matt one for running this stage the fastest. So pretty cool. It's got the straps on top. So you could basically put your rifle under it. It's got handles on both sides. And it looks like this. So we use this in five positions um, on the tank trap. Basically, there's three legs, so there was those three legs, one on the side of the tank trap, and then right in the middle where the knuckle was. So that was kind of cool. It worked very well. Let's see, when I watch your live stream, it is a little fuzzy. When I watch the replay, is really clear. Is that on my side? 45 auto, I'm not sure. I'm actually trying to run my phone via link to my computer i have the video turned off but so i can read the chat so if it's really grainy it's probably because the the phone's trying to do basically two things at once um, if it gets too bad tell me i'll turn it off and i'll just try to read the comments from there but we're just gonna have a little bit of fun we're not gonna be on here long um darren Beck says so sick of this garbage again i didn't get notified yeah, Darren, I don't know what it is. It's not just, you know, one channel or two. I was really hearing it about all the channels, so it's kind of, I don't know what the deal is with YouTube. Just saw the last live an hour ago. You guys did really good. Plus five said, let's see. So I'll put, I'll put together some footage for you, plus five, and uh, you can use it for your website or whatever. Rick, you're the gray guy tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. We all ended up wearing gray stuff. Um, I don't know if it's because of the weather and we all like gray jackets, but it was a little chilly today, so all of us showed up with jackets that were gray. Let's see. Good stuff. I did like the innovation and can see how your version can work better on something like a wood tank trap since it anchors in. Yeah, it would have worked really well. Um, we actually did a couple uh, different angles on the screws and that kind of stuff. And uh, we were ready to go, but we didn't need it. So you got to follow the rules. And the rules were you couldn't use a rear bag or any bag, just that udder bag. That was it. Sounds like Atari Missile Command. Harvested a 6x6 buck and a doe. Opening morning gun deer season here in Indiana. Awesome, Ranger 10. That's pretty cool, man. I've heard the same complaint from viewers about not getting notifications. And I think it's a YouTube thing. Yeah, Garage Guy, I've been hearing a lot of that. Even on Ray's channel, they were saying the same thing. Yeah, I cannot wait to see some footage. You boys having fun. I was able to get a little bit of footage, so we'll see what happens. Uh, see what kind of videos we can put out for you guys. Should work out well. The uh, I did get some good footage of different shooters, myself, uh, X Ring, Matt P, and uh, Bill. Actually, I got and John. So, do have a little bit of footage that will be pretty cool for you guys to see. It'll give you an idea if you've never been to one of these, or maybe you're thinking about going to one, and just to be able to get an idea of what actually takes place. Um, so it'll be kind of neat. Chris Smith, what's going on? Jerry Bear says, question for you, Rick, and or anybody else in the chat. Anybody considering an SBR tax stamp? Um, no, I actually have, uh, I sent two off. I guess this could be good news for everybody. I don't know. It is good news for me. I got, um, as of, what's today, Saturday? I think it was Thursday or Friday. I sent both pieces of paperwork off to get a... Uh, Basically, I got two suppressors that are started in jail. I have heard that it's right around four months right now, 
hopefully that's the case. The last suppressor that I received and my first suppressor that I received was uh, exactly almost, actually it was exactly six months. So some of you guys that are thinking, well, it takes forever, it takes a year. It is at this time right now, at least, it's uh, a lot faster than that. So maybe something you guys may consider. Let's see. Sound is a bit. You are targeting us with sonar and we are out. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably because this is on. Let me close this. I'll turn that off. Then all the power will go to my phone as far as service. So I am going to have more issues. Let me bring this in and I hopefully can read the uh, comments. Turn this like this. And I'll see if I can read the comments. Whoa, camera's all screwed up. We can't have that. We just can't have that. There we go. Three months, 28 days. Nice. Yeah, so right there at the four month mark. Still crackling. Still there. Huh. I wonder what. I don't know what it is. Still there, Andy Nelson says. So that wasn't it. Maybe it's still linked up. I don't know. Uh, it's not worked. It's okay, but it's weird. You will see when you rewatch later. Yeah, that's about all I can do until our internet comes. I got, I think it comes in four more days. Four more days and then uh, Comporium is the company out here that we're going to have to use. And supposedly I'll have pretty dang good service. I'm going to be running everything hardwired so it should even be a little bit faster and better. And man, that bright, that light is bright. I'm thinking about a Form 1 for my 11 and a half, but don't know if it's worth it. Well, I don't know. It'd be worth it, I think. Uh, does your rifle accept 1022 mags? Uh, Steve Clark, this one does, actually. It's the uh, Ruger RPR. I actually use the 15-round mag on a two stages and the 10-round mag on the rest of them. This is not internet. It's something else. One me says, maybe, just maybe, we are getting bamboozled by something. Maybe... I don't know, just maybe it's something crazy. All I know is that light is bright. And I can't take it no more. So I'm going to turn this bad doggy down. There we go. I'm going to be able to see the comments now. I might just be able to see the comments. So has anybody got any quick questions or anything? Ramsey Country, what's up, brother? So we got Ramsey Country out there. Gamma Rays. That's right, it's Gamma Rays. It's a well, when I uh, cleaned the stage, meaning got... I think it was 10 out of 10 or whatever targets were. I can't remember if it was 12 out of 12 or 10 out of 10. But I was excited to see that the uh, Death X Squad got me a perfect 10. So I was uh, super excited about that. I actually ran that in conjunction with the bipod just the way the uh, it's buffering now. Yeah, it's, I don't know. We'll probably have to end it shortly then. I hear somebody's phone dinging down here. <laughs> But uh, let's see. Well, sir, same here, plus five. Let's see. I'm waiting for our silencer central. Damn, I can't see that. Heard of the Australian. I got to go over here, guys, so I can read your comments. You're just going to have to see my ugly mug up close. Let's see. Let me go back. Let me go back here. Have you ever heard of the Australian down under ammunition? I have not. I have not heard of that. Darren Becker says, I'm waiting for the silencer central. Out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, to get my second can. Nice. Let's see. Good evening, Jer Bear. Todd. Todd Elst is out there. It's okay. We'll deal with it. Just received my 6.5 PRC rifle. Ranger 10. Very nice. What brass are you using for reloading? I'm using a Starline. Let's see how the comp go. The comp went really good. Ray got third, Matt got fifth, and I got, uh, well, in my division, I got third. They don't give uh, third place trophies, though, for third in production, but I did middle of the pack in both. Uh, I think there were seven of us. I got third, and then I was, like, right in the middle of 40 shooters. Actually, I think it was a sliver below 40 shooters. I had a couple stages that killed me. All I needed was four points, four more hits, and I would have got first place in production. So that's how close the race was. 
Uh, let's see, Vanna, what behind curtain number one we want to see? What up, Ramsey Country? Bag most used. Actually, the bag most used was the uh, it was the uh, sand sock gear middle one, the medium. Just because we we're using that a lot in prone positions, there's a couple prone positions, and then we use the Coltac. Was it a Coltac? Yeah, the Coltac one that um, attaches to the bottom. I think it's the Coltac, not Rick's bags. Yeah, the fun bags, Todd. Let's see, Ramsey. I was out here to get something on the freezer. It was fixed. LOL cheat. What's the name of the three bags X ring spoke about? Those are the Sandsock gear bags. I have a set somewhere. Actually, I think they're in the car. Yeah, they're a lightweight fill. I don't have it here. Nope. Nope. Sandsock gear, though. There's a the three pack. Basically, there's a large, medium, small. The small is very small. It's about this big for a squeeze bag in the rear. Who won in Ray's division? Um, actually, the answer's on the phone, and I can't get it right now. I did say on X Rings channel, but I don't remember who it was. Like Kevin something. Will you have to upgrade your breaker to handle more amperage? No, Darren. This thing's. This thing's been wired by a professional called John Crowderman. I got more. We're actually adding a couple more lights in this area. This is the reloading, not reloading. This is the uh, gun cleaning area. And right there, we're going to add a couple lights because it is a little dark in that corner. Sorry, I will keep saying about, about the loser. Yes, one me. No one's lost yet, buddy. Just so you know. 51 people. We got 26 thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Um, if you guys would hit the thumbs up button. I appreciate it, by the way. No problem, Plus 5. It was a pleasure to use it. Reloading room is coming along. Todd the Elster right now is having cocktails. I think it's some uh, Mexican restaurant. But it's getting there, buddy. Gotta say, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Drew Bradley, thank you, sir. The hillside range I go to is also interested in the product as well, but that's between you guys. But we'll get them a card as well. They love the prices. I don't know what you're talking about. That must be for somebody else. Talking rocks out there. Alaska one, Andy says, "Where is the recliner and wide screen TV?" Well. Problem is I can't really put the good stuff in here yet. Not that I have any good stuff to put in here yet, but I got to do all the drywall sanding still. So between more electronics like TVs and sorry, I'm burping over here. I had pizza for dinner. Um, TVs and that kind of stuff and couches and all the fancy gizmo gadgets. I don't really want to put that in here yet because we're still in construction mode. So I've been holding off on putting screens in here. Their screens aren't really going to do anything until I can run uh, internet power anyway. So it would be cool to be able to read the comments from the room, you know, farther distance away instead of you guys having to look right at me. But let's see. I know you will dislike me, but I have to share the truth. You keep sharing whatever you want to share with me. Let's see. So that's the answer on the recliners and the widescreen. I do want to get some uh, screens in here so I can read comments that and watch YouTube videos and uh, make YouTube videos and all the other reasons so it'll be cool when it's done is the VOD range private only it actually is a membership Larry Palmer um, but with that said when they have matches you know you can sign up and you're allowed to shoot with them did anyone use a bipod everybody used the bipod uh, Steve I don't think you could have made it through I guess you could have made it through the match without using a bipod, but I would say I would say probably 98% of everybody had a bipod. That's kind of like, you know, the minimal kind of gear you're going to need. You're going to need a, a bipod for sure. You could have done it with the bag, but it would have been more of a headache than just running a bipod for sure. Duh. 
Got rid of those beanbag chairs. No, I actually got them. They're uh, right here. Matt's uh, got them right here. There's the beanbag chairs. They actually work okay, but if you're sitting in them for a long time, they suck. The reloading room will not be complete until I get you some Elfster safety glass. That's right, Elfster. That's right, buddy. I got uh, some most of you guys know. There you go. There's some safety. Let me borrow those real quick. Hi. For infirmity. No, wait, hold on. Let's see if I can remember how this goes. No ha What is it? Not no hassle. For no BS. I can't remember how it goes. I was trying to be Todd the Elster, but I can't remember. I can't remember how the, the saying goes. What's up, Brian T? Has Ray started his website yet? Forget the name. A lot of X-Ring sites. It's not up and running yet. So until, until all his stuff has been in his hand and he's able to sell it, he doesn't want everybody trying to order stuff. The site's made, but he's waiting on all the product to show up so he can take pictures in order to have the pictures on the website. So partially it's done, yes, and partially it's not complete because he's waiting on the product to show up so he can get the photos put into the web page. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense because that's as good as I can do. Not really, the reality is he lost. All right, one well, me, stop your madness. Zeus, killing is killing, boy. That's right. We got one me out there, plus five. He lost like how W. D. Bush lost. Drew, you have to be crazy not to know. Trump is trying to undermine. Yeah, one me, he's he sticks around. I I think he's a great person because he he's got some good knowledge, but he's also a little on the uh, left leaning side of. He's actually not even in the USA. He's, uh, but he keeps track of what's going on. Brian T, appreciate the thumbs up. If you haven't hit the thumbs up yet, I'd appreciate it if you hit it. Do so now. Do so now. That's right. Yes, Fox is crazy. Uh, what do you do, Matt? Says Rick. What do you, Matt, and Ray put your match ammunition in when you travel? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. So for the PRS style matches that we did out in Utah and New Mexico, uh, it was basically just in, well, New Mexico, I was shooting a 223. I was shooting the Black Beauty, as we call it. So that was just in regular boxes, Nexus boxes. When we shot the Utah match, I used uh, the normal uh, MTM blue boxes. And that's how I shipped all the stuff. We had to ship it out because the weight was too much. I was going to say just range bag. Today. Oh, range bag. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, just a range bag. One of these front pockets. Keep it out of the sun. That was about it for today. We, yeah, didn't, for we didn't have to lug things around too far. So. Yeah, I did the same thing. I had my mags and my ammo. Just uh, Zeus! Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Zeus. <laughs> Zeus. Uh, just had the ammunition sitting in the bag. It was kind of nice because everything's so much lighter shooting 22s. That's good. Whatever. Okay. Perfect. Chill pill gun guy. I got some. Your friendly neighborhood dealers out here. Thanks for the hospitality, my brother. Don't forget all your winnings. No, I'm going to leave it all here in the man cave. Okay. Um, we'll figure out something for that bipod. We'll get it on order or something. Yeah. Well, it's free. Just got to send it in. Yeah. All right. John Jeffries is night, take care about dress safe. Is there anything specific that you plan on changing in your gear before the next 22 match? Great question, John. I will say I don't know the the gentleman's name, but uh, he had come over. He noticed that I had an RPR, and this is a Timony trigger. These are very very nice triggers, and this one is designed for the Ruger RPR for the 22. And uh, so I ended up buying this album for 150 bucks. These retail, I don't know, around 200 bucks. So the trigger will be a little bit nicer. So that will be an upgrade to the Ruger. I am trying to uh, get right now the uh, <laughs> the Voodoo as well. So we'll see if that happens. Follow suit now that I know it works well. It's an amazing rifle. Um, there's a huge difference when you. Uh, I retire uh, one me right after January, so I got two more shifts. I got December shift 
in January, and then I'm officially retired. So, unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions and all that other bullshit, um, the retirement party is probably going to be kind of, kind of, I don't know, not as cool as it normally would be. Yeah, Timmy is sweet. Cameron says, "Yeah, I'm excited about it. I wish I remember the gentleman's name, but um, yeah, super excited to utilize this trigger in the RPR." The RPR has a two-piece trigger, kind of like the Glock, where it has the center portion that's kind of the safety. Never been a really big fan. You can dial them in and make them a little bit lighter and tweak with them a little bit, but you're never really going to get this type of quality uh, trigger. So I went for it, spent my money on it, and uh, I just got to install it and see how it does. So you're going to have uh, file taxes in California for a couple days of work. Yeah, well, I've been working since uh, basically throughout the whole year, so it doesn't really matter. Good information, Rick. Make sure to smash the thumbs up button. I appreciate it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear these for a little bit before we get out of here. I'm going to be uh, Todd Elster. If you guys are into reloading, thinking about reloading, or scared to reload, but you're thinking about it still, get over to Mr. Elster's Rifle and Reloading. has a a lot of very in-depth, very informative um, videos for you guys to learn from. So definitely check out his videos. What's up, Hidden Steel, California? Well, we are going to have the hell of a party for you. Midget ninjas everywhere. Awesome. I'm excited, Hidden Steel. I meant for 2021. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know how all that shit works, but it is what it is. I'm retiring in January. You know, people, not all taxes are bad. Just over taxes. I'm in for the midget ninjas. That's right, Carcane. If you guys are in for those, let me know down below by hitting the thumbs up button. <laughs> Everyone smash the thumbs up, Jerry says. Appreciate it, Jerry. Rickinata. Man, it is hot down here. <laughs> I did wear this hat today. So I don't know if you guys have seen this one. This is a different one. This is the camo... Flex fit version. I don't have these for sale, but I do have the black ones. I do have a box of a few over there. I I still have uh, two hats I gotta send out. I've been getting ready for this match, so I haven't had time. I need to go get a printer. Ever since I moved, I don't have a printer, so I gotta print my uh, labels so I can get those damn hats shipped out. So those are coming. And actually, I think Andy's one of them. If it's the same Andy. So it is coming. It'd probably be a little while and it'll get there. See, TB, hey Rick, what all the lessons have you learned that is going to help you shoot the next match? As far as this match, I think it's more of a combination of um, the last couple years of... Um, I think if there's one thing to learn about PRS, it's practice shooting in different funky positions. Um, when you're shooting prone... It's a very solid platform, very easy or easier to hit your targets and it makes you feel good about yourself. But if you're trying to print for groups, totally understand. But if you want to get used to like being off of some weird objects of some sort and using bipods and funky spots and, and different bags of sorts from more other types of things like ladders or different poles, um, that's where the PRS style shooting doing that and you guys probably have seen some of those videos of us shoot using ladders and uh, like cattle fences where it's got the poles and you keep going down and shooting off of just different weird kind of objects those are that's what really <coughs> when I get to a stage and it seemed pretty simple I was like it wasn't um, over over it wasn't intimidating, basically. I was like, oh, this is going to be pretty simple. Um, it was just a matter of the targets. A lot of the targets were like silver dollar size to quarter size. And then as the distances got farther out, they went to like one-third IDPA. And when we did shoot out to 309, I think it was 396 yards, so we were right at 400 yards. It was either 398 or 396 was the farthest distance. So that's pretty damn good with the... With a 22, it's like shooting a thousand yards with a 
with a with a six five Creedmoor. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, all right 396 john says yeah so it was right at four right at 400 yards and that's pretty impressive a lot of people not so much watching this channel but most people probably haven't shot out past 150 yards and now you're going to do this with a 40 grain you know little 22 bullet so it's it's tough it's a lot of fun but what's nice about it is it's not crazy loud you don't have to wear ear pro all day long um quite a few people in our squad were shooting suppressed so it was kind of nice very quiet and uh it was a, an enjoyable day i think if i could only shoot one type of match um it would be the 22 long rifle uh prs style shooting it's just so enjoyable the price of shooting even expensive 22 long rifle ammo is much easier to swallow than uh, shooting like six creed more or six five creed more you don't even have to reload you don't gotta wash brass you don't gotta resize it and all that stuff so it's uh it's definitely a way to go for some of you guys that don't want to reload maybe you don't have room to reload that kind of stuff so you can have your own view that makes country great how we weigh our view when okay we're talking that thoughts on your scope oh that's right andy um okay so i forgot i can't just pick it up and show it the uh i shot the vortex diamond back it was a six by 24 it was a 30 millimeter tube i ran the night or the sunshade on it as well figuring that depending on the light um depending on what stages we're shooting between the day and towards the end of the day uh sun wise i just left the cover on there to make it a little easier all right, well, let me slow it down, dude. Um, I thought the scope worked really well, especially remember I got the scope for three hundred and forty bucks. It was three ninety nine at uh, the Sportsman Outdoors. So the quality for the glass, the uh, the turrets tracked well. The parallax knob was, you know, you could find a nice clear spot. And uh, as far as windage and for elevation, they tracked very well. The one thing that I noticed with the reticle, there was two stages. The first one was stage one for us. It was really stage two, but our first stage, we were shooting into the shadows um, at these really small, hell, I can't remember what it was. It was like a, like a little coyote or a rabbit or some, something. Um, and as you went up the mountain, basically because there's a lot of trees in North Carolina, very shadowy in this one section. It was dark enough that the target, the targets were dark enough that the reticle, it was very tough to see the line. Now throughout the whole day, it worked really well, except for two stages. We shot 11 stages. So there was that stage, which I had like two, I think it was two targets that were pretty difficult to see. And I think some of that has to do with the objective size and then also the tube size. So you're looking at um, being able to capture light. And this, I could be wrong on this, but this is what I, I felt like I saw throughout the reticle was it didn't, you know, with the 34 millimeter tube, you got a lot more dial, but I think it lets a lot more light in along with the objective. So I'm used to shooting a 56 which is a pretty big, uh, you know, a pretty big optic in the front. Ah, hold on, getting bit by something. So that could have been it. I'm not really sure. On on the higher end stuff, I have the ability to illuminate the reticle, and there would have been those two spots where, yeah, there you go, right there, Bill Sweeney. Uh, does that one have? No, it does not have the illuminated reticle. But remember, this is, uh, I was shooting production. This is for people that can basically go to the store, they can grab a rifle, they can grab, um, you know, a decent scope, but you have to be under $1,500, and that's rifle scope. And uh, the problem is, say you have a decent rifle, say it costs, I don't know, let's just call it like Bill. Bill's, Bill just commented, I think. Um, he has a Bagara. All right, I'm getting low power here, so we're going to have to end this soon. He has a, uh, his Bagara is pretty expensive. So 
in order for him if he wanted to stay in production he wouldn't have very much money he could spend on an optic so I've always been the guy that says spend more money on an optic than the rifle and that way you can always move that optic around from rifle to rifle as well but uh, that was probably some of the things I would say the turrets being five so basically I don't have it here or do I no, on the on the HD, I can I can crank the turrets all the way up with, before spinning around, and on on the Diamondback, I only get to go to five, and then it goes back to zero. So you can get kind of confused. So I did tape. You know what? I'm just going to show you guys this. Let's see if I can do this without getting in trouble. But it's just a scope. So the the top of this, I the. Uh, you can see that there is a tin there so I basically made another line so as I cranked that over it would go from uh, you know one two three four five and then it goes to zero but it on top now it goes six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve for the most part so that's one of the ways I tried to do that in order to keep from me getting confused because once you have two rotations in there then it's like especially when you're shooting out to 400 yards you have to basically crank it all the way I had to crank it all the way to 12 and then add everything else as a hold in the reticle so it gets a little confusing when you're going from target to target and you're like okay I got a minus how much now so one of the things I did on my arm when I was putting in my data was I basically just called it 12 is 0, what's up X-Ring, and then added everything to it or subtracted it off of there. So it was really nice in PRS style. You get basically the course stage. They tell you the distances so you can kind of pre-plan it. I had my cards kind of made up for last night. 2A Refugee, how you doing? And uh, all I needed to do was wait till I got there and basically run the Kestrel again get new environmentals and then write the dope down before right before you shoot so that's kind of how that worked yep Ray's out there let's see a good idea he, uh, what's he got for a good idea don't feed the there you go yep all right so Joe Dowdy how are you see I'm seriously confused on what's going on hidden steel that could be both of us all I know is I'm tired. I tried to uh, get some sleep last night. I slept pretty good. I told Ray I slept like a baby. He's like, ah, you were up late worrying about the match, weren't you? And I'm like, not really. I went, I got, you know, I got some hours of sleep. But I would say planning ahead, doing the armband things, um, definitely helped me out. It made it so I wasn't rushing around as much. Now Matt, on the other hand, he waited till um, today to do it, and he likes being able to write how the targets are. You know, if they're in different areas, he can write them in that. How it's going to look on his arm. As it would look when he's looking out there. So, totally understand that as well. That You don't know where the targets are. You just know the distances and how many and what the rules are for that stage. Let's see. No problem. But I'm going to get done here. It's a short chat. It's been a long day. Um, we've been up since 5. So, other than that, I wanted to give you guys a quick... What we learned, um, those guys ended up splitting on me, but um, I, those are the things that I had learned during the match. Was all that practice definitely paid off in making me feel a little more comfortable going into each stage. Um, learning that uh, more practice is going to make it even easier. Being able to get good environmentals and getting good zeros prior to the, the match is, uh, is a must. Um, so other than that, I will let you guys go. We got some. I got some videos that I'll be putting out. Andy Nelson, I'll be uh, trying to get your hat out soon. I apologize. It's only been a couple days, but I got to go buy a printer at Wally World or somewhere and then uh, print out that stuff. So I'll give you a heads up when it's coming. Um, that you and uh, the other Tim Davis. Let's see. Thanks for the time, Rick. See you next time, bro. Cameron, appreciate it. Let's see. Great job. Third is a lot better than... That the fifth you were shooting for. Yeah, Steve. It was. I was doing really good, too. And I just had a couple bomb stages. So I just needed like three more. No, four more. 
I think it was four more hits and I would have got first place in production. So that's the sad part. But I did, I did lose to uh, Bill, which he was really cool. I met him in, uh, he's not on YouTube, I don't think, but met him on, uh, when we shot the Snipers Unknown match in South Carolina at GTI facility. So it was cool. I was glad he won. I would have been more glad if I would have won, but no better guy to give it to than to him. So you win or you learn. That's right. I won, I won in learning today, so that's what I won. And I got some cool stuff, too. So it is what it is. You guys take care. Be safe out there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully all is well. Take care. And I don't know. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on, so just be, just be careful. See you guys on the next one. John Crowderman. Good job today, John. Glad to see you out there and glad you went after it and kicked butt. Took names. Adios, muchachos. Everybody, adios.